um, will uh, vote to deny or accept the minutes from the previous meeting. I have a couple of very minor modifications. Good. Okay. And I've given them to Jen, and they're really pretty easy. It's basically on the first page on line uh, one and five. It talks about accessibility, accessibility to healthy food, and I just changed it to drop the word to and change the word accessibility to read accessible, affordable and accessible healthy food. So that's on line five and eight. And then on page two at the top, touching um, the first sentence, uh, I'd like to change it to Ms. Bayer reported that she does not feel that the town currently meets the needs of the average citizen regarding health promotion and wellness due to the constraints of the town budget which in turn drives the number of staff who currently are able to cover the areas mandated by state and federal government, which at this time leaves no room for additional initiatives focused on promotion of wellness, period. In the future, if additional budget or grants become available, expansion of the mission to include wellness and health promotion should be considered. So there's my correction. Oh, you got it. Yes. Yeah. Everything else I agree with. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Um, all in favor of accepting Aye. the minutes? Aye. Aye. Unanimous? Aye. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make a motion we accept the minutes. Yes, thank you. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor of accepting? Aye. 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 We'll have to today. <laughs> that was my, I'll, I'll just yep, that's fine. Okay. Okay. The motions have been accepted. Okay, the next thing we have on our agenda is the Board of Health work session. Um, item A is participating municipality agreement for tobacco control services. The Board of Health should consider the services that the Department of Public Health provides for tobacco control. They do education, they do our on-site inspections for investigating whether uh, their signage and proper permitting through the state regulations as well as the town regulations. They do the, the sting operations where they go and see if they can purchase, get a, an underage person to purchase tobacco products. This is a service that we currently utilize. They just really need it ratified with a signature. Um, it does not mean that we have to implement certain regulations or permitting that they would like us to do. We still have that autonomy there. Um, I do recommend that we go forward with the agreement. Any discussion on that? Yes. I think it's a great idea, particularly the amount of time we spent this year discussing underage uh, uses of tobacco and products mm -hmm. and the possibility of well, increasing to 21. So I think that we spent a lot of time in studying this. So this is a great move to have them continue to be our partners in mm -hmm. working with the town. I agree. Uh, they'd, uh, they'd like a copy of the agreement signed and also for us to send a copy of our regulations some towns do have a tobacco sales permit, um, as we do, so we would need to send them uh, a copy of that as well. So if we could make that happen after the meeting, that so would be great. The other one who signs is correct? I sign it as well as the board okay. chairman, so that would just need uh, Pam's signature. So you need a motion? It's there, we would need to vote for it here at our meeting. And then they need a copy of this agreement sure. signed. I'll make a motion that we accept the proposal to uh, continue to support this initiative and to submit the necessary documents. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Unanimous. Uh, the motion passed. The next item we have is a review of the 2018 Board of Health meeting schedule. Last month I talked about maybe trying to get this to Monday nights. 
it came to my attention that that's not the best idea because the selectmen meet on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be able to attend their meetings should we need to present something and they wouldn't be able to attend our meetings should they wish to as part of their liaison services. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably not the best idea to have meetings at the same time. Um, so we did make a schedule for sticking with our Tuesdays, um, and the meeting schedule is attached. There are a couple of holidays. Oh, thank you. There are a couple of um, items to just keep in mind when you're making your schedules for, for next year in May there is town meeting and town election so that does alter our usual second Tuesday of the month schedule we'd be meeting on Monday May 14th that week because town elections are on the 15th the week before that is town meeting we're not able to meet during town meeting and that's really the only date that's not on a Tuesday and the other ones there are some holidays but they don't interfere with our Tuesday schedule for the most part there are some Tuesdays that there's a Monday holiday before it so if anyone wanted to meet with me prior to a meeting it would have to be done the week before because we wouldn't be here on a Monday I need to review this again the two reasons and one of them is I was thrilled that it was a Monday because I have a six month commitment to be in Boston on the second or third Tuesday of each month. It okay. depends when the event occurs. Um, and then also I was wondering what I didn't recall if the town meeting is the fifteenth, so I was like town May fourteenth is my birthday. Well, so I guess I have to have my husband do something over the weekend. Well town meeting is on the seventh and eighth. Oh, seventh and eighth. So why, Ele why elections are on the fifteenth? Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Okay. I won't be here for the April meeting because my daughter's having a baby in Florida. Okay. April meeting. All of you are required. Well, <laughs> so I'll get back to you like within twenty-four hours, forty-eight hours on the double checking the dates. Okay, that would be wonderful. So we can put this off. If you want to table it and put it off till next month. Sure. That all right. Um, and moving on, we have um, a vote to reauthorize the town clerk to sign burial permits on behalf of the Board of Health. She's been doing this for years, um, burial permits and um, all things to do with funeral are, are now done electronically and they are done in the town clerk's office year a few years ago we would need to physically sign a burial permit as a health agent and we allowed the town clerk to do it then and she, with the change in director she wanted to have it re-ratified for uh, a new signature, a new board, new director, um, something she does on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't see any problem with that. Would be reauthorizing her to sign the building permit. Are there any cons to this? I mean, this sounds like a, a no-brainer, but is are there any downsides no, to us not doing it? No, uh, we don't currently do it now. Um, getting us involved in it again would be just more time consuming yeah she she reviews the death certificate as what we used to do is review the death certificate and compare it to the burial permit to make sure that the dates match up um, that di the person's name matches up there aren't any errors like that so it's something that she's capable of doing we'd be naming her a special health agent for this purpose only I don't see if there's any downside to it so I'll make a motion that we accept having the um, town clerk sign the papers second all in favor aye aye it's unanimous motion passes and then the last thing as part of our work session is to recognize the resignation of dr. Robert Inslee 
he emailed a couple of weeks ago with his desire to resign effective immediately. Um, he was a longtime board member. We're very grateful for his service. Um, it was very good thought to have us sign a card for him. Um, he does need to officially resign with the town clerk. We've told him that. Hopefully, he'll he'll get on, get on that. Um, we'll we'll give him a reminder email. Um, so it's just something for you to recognize. There's no vote required. Um, so now we are one member short. So keep your eyes and ears open for anyone that may be a good fit for the board. We do. We, we, we should be operating at full capacity for the, mostly for the reason of people not being able to make every, each and every meeting. Um, we'll be sending Dr. Bob's card out to him. And Jen's gonna do that, address it. Mm -hmm. And he was on the board for 10 years, was it? I think wow. it was 10 That's years. That's great. Yeah, he's been wanting to retire for quite some time now. <laughs> and uh, all of the same. He was holding on to make sure every the board was fully intact and um, helping me out with my first meeting or two. And That's then nice. um, he wants to retire, so and and not have any obligations. So very good for him. Mm -hmm. A lot of good work by Dr. Bob. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Hey, my analysis at the selections meeting, you know, asking for volunteers. Do you have a list of requirements that shows up on the charter itself? That you at the same time, you know, in terms of background, mm -hmm. we don't have any. Form to get, to help get the word out. Yes, mm -hmm. we our charter requires a doctor on the board, which we currently have, Dr. Cushing. Um, it would it would be beneficial to have medical or environmental background, um, but there aren't any hard and fast requirements to get on the board. Just a, a full time resident of the town. Oh, full time. Um, living here. Oh, living here, resident. Owning property. In other Owning words. property. Yes. Okay, it's good to know, so we can mm -hmm. keep our ear to the ground. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, it's not quite seven o'clock yet for new business, so if you would like, I could move into my report. Okay. So it's been a busy month. Um, still have not offered a position job to the full-time senior health agent um, position. It's still vacant. I've been working with Hunter, who's the part-time inspector. He's moving up very well, um, able to do septic inspections on his own. He's learning how to do some real estate transfer inspection report review. Um, and he's he's quite good with the food f food inspections. Uh, he's serve safe certified now. Um, pretty big bonus. He's coming along with me to the Mass Health Officers Conference tomorrow and Thursday. That's in Falmouth. It's the annual conference. It happens every year. This year, it's in Falmouth. It's usually either in Springfield or Hyannis. So Hyannis uh, was a little easier to get to, but Falmouth will do. Um, last month, we had our annual flu clinic for the employees. We did about 104 people. Those were staff members, town employees, and I think I talked last month about we don't do a public uh, resident clinic any longer because they're so widely available at Stop and Shop and CVS, and every every corner is offering a flu shot. Um, we have Acela issues again. Um, Acela is our software program that we have been using the last three years now for all of our licensing and permits. Um, we ran into an issue with renewals. The renewal license renewals would work. They worked the first year, they worked the second year, and now that we're in the second renewal, they weren't working, they, we couldn't put in any money, we couldn't put in any information, it wasn't kicking a report back, it was giving us a, 
expiration date of 2015. So that was a few weeks worth of back and forth with the consulting company. I think today we finally got it to work. So that's a really good thing. Wow. And uh, so yeah. that's been very frustrating. This Acela program was supposed to be a package deal and we were supposed to be able to push the button and have it work and it doesn't happen that way. Um, so do you think this will happen with other things down the road? Most likely? Yeah. There's another, the second problem we've been dealing with this month is September 1st we required all inspection reports to be filed electronically through the online portal, payments made online, we no longer needed to take in any paper, or any checks. It was working great for about a month and then the payment issues star started. Um, Acela uses a third party called Invoice Cloud, and they process all of our all of the payments that are made online. And customers were able to put their their item in their cart, pay for it, and then they were getting an error message saying that it, the payment wasn't going through, but it actually was going through. On our end, we were no longer getting the reports as completed reports so we couldn't review them um, and we would have to do all this back-end work in order to even open the report and show that it had been paid so that is still a problem um, so we implemented this online permitting and we've been working twice as hard to keep it going because it will get fixed and we will work with it, um, but it has been frustrating for not only us, but the customers too, because they they are getting an error message and they feel that something's wrong even when it's not. Uh, so we're hopefully working that, through that. Um, the towns of Harwich, Yarmouth, Chatham, and Provincetown all use Acela. And since Barnstable County, um, the, the consultant that worked through the county resigned and they haven't refilled that position. So we haven't been getting any support through Barnstable County. Um, so Yarmouth has a very good IT person who is very affluent with this program. So he's been able to fix some of their problems. So we've come up with an Acela user group with all these four towns and we're combining our resources oh, so we can maybe become our own consultant. Um, so we're trying to work through these problems, but it has been a frustrating month with a seller. So my question is, that relates to that, because of the, the issue seem to be the company that owns or is the contractor for Sella, are they stepping up and um, supporting this rather than charging additional fee, are we, are we able to get the services that were part of the contract that we're not getting now as part of the original agreement? Yes and no. Um, Acela has contracted out a, an IT department called ZIT and they are fixing the problems oh. and they do charge a fee that's going to the county right now. So the town isn't paying for the the technical fixes and they do fix the small day-to-day -day problems and they, they work on the bigger ones but it does take weeks sometimes um, so there is a this ZIT that has been able to help um, but they do charge an hourly rate and it goes to the county so the seller user group has been um, hoping to get someone from the county actually next week to try to come and, and talk about a long-term solution. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have to town by town pay for, for technical assistance or will the county continue to support the financial end of, of this program that mm -hmm. tends to, to break? So we'll see. I'll have more of an update next month on, on that because the commission is supposed to meet with, with uh, the Acela user group next week. That was uh, good creativity to get a user group together. Well, we all started having the same problems. Um, the payment problem, the renewal problem, little things like adding a new user. We have new employees and they need new usernames. That's not something we know, we know how to do. 
um, but there was a tech person from Yarmouth who did, and thankfully, towns talk. Does that slow down the process of when people apply, applying for permits? The ability to approve things, let's say, like the septic process? Thankfully, the, the, the permitting side of things, the, uh, the one-time permits, the uh, septic permits, the building permits, those are working. Mm -hmm. It's the things that need renewals, like a food establishment, a store, a, store, um, a stable, anything that someone renews year after year. Those are what, right now, we have a, a, a stack of them that we've had to hold on to. The, the check is still attack, attached. We haven't been able to deposit anything um, until today. So <laughs> it was a bit of a slowdown. You know, it sounds strange because that ordinarily when you have a contract with a provider of uh, 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 technical um, services, that if something goes wrong, the provider fixes it. They don't charge for it. So right. This is strange. Was that in your contract that you had to pay for it? I mean, the, the user had to pay for it? The, it was not a straightforward package. It was something um, a lot of towns went in on this company, um, and the county was f really footing the bill for it because it was something the whole county wanted to get into at first, and then as... So the contract is with the county, not with each town then, huh? I the, see. The IT tech, the, yeah. the contract is with the county. But that contract isn't from the, the Acela. The contract is with another company that is fixing Acela. It sounds a little fishy to me, to be honest with you. It's a Maybe it's I should a talk to Leo about it. <laughs> he, I, I don't know if he knows anything about it. Be well, he certainly knows about the county. Well, yes. Okay. Well, the great news is, is you have the group, and I'm sure mm -hmm. that together you can brainstorm it. And, and if there are issues beyond repair or that are negative to the towns, then some type of action could be taken or whatever, what's ever appropriate. Yeah. Not a shocker. Anytime you do anything, with your, would it take two years to put this together? Do you from start to finish? It started five years ago. Five years ago. It started five years ago with with really developing the permitting and licensing modules right. um, to get them to, to work for us. And then they did, they worked. Um, so it's going to take a year to get the bugs out of it. To yeah. Overall, it sounds like a Y2K problem, similar. It's an odd problem. They call it scripting errors. Mm. There you go. You're not new to that. <clears throat> um, one more it, um, thing I wanted to just let you guys know of is a couple of weeks ago I was at the new cultural center, the old middle school. They're talking about getting the kitchen back up and running over there. So there may be some talk and some permitting going on in the future. It's got all the bones. So it was a commercial kitchen. It has it has all the equipment there. Nothing was plugged in so I don't know if it's really working or not but um, how many years has it been closed now? Only three. I think it's only been closed three years. Yeah. But it hasn't been used for three years, so um, the equipment's not old. I think it'll work fine, but it just needs to be cleaned up. So it's that's um, something that's a valuable that's asset. It's nice to see it mm -hmm. be used. I think it would be, by the, be uh, used town for something. I think it has a great, great use. Yeah. In, in our um, <coughs> policy and procedure notebook, or whatever you want to call it, training. Is there a section on that I could read up on uh, on similar a parallel issue? I was asked this week about uh, being a, a person who's involved with the hospitality committee for the Chatham Harwich newcomers. Mm -hmm. Why the the town doesn't allow food to be brought in in certain, let's say, into the community center, and it seems a little frustrating. So, is there a section you can you can do it offline? Refer me to. Or I can have this person call and speak with you. You can have them call and speak with me. It's not that we don't allow it. Um, they just need to meet the requirements of anyone who wanted to serve food to the public. Serve I safe food. I tried to my dietitian talk with them about food okay. safety, but uh -huh. I wasn't convincing enough. Yes. Um, they just felt it was a change <laughs> in what's been going on in the past. So I just said, well, 
uh, they can get help from the town and get mm -hmm. their questions answered. So, <coughs> sure. So if there's something I can learn from this too, if you want to refer me to sure, something I can, uh, you have that would help. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, I think we have a few minutes to do correspondence. We did get a notice of appeal from Mr. Viprino, 35 Chatham Road, that's the farm. We received notice of a hearing that is was scheduled for tomorrow. However, he has a previous engagement with the DEP tomorrow, um, a different hearing. So this hearing versus the Board of Health has been rescheduled for November 29th nothing you guys have to go to I'll be going to that along with town council so the town council will be there um, we are assuming it's to appeal the decision to have the manure pile removed it's the only decision we really made last week last month um, but the uh, petition for review did not tell us any <coughs> details is this a procedural hearing or an evidentiary hearing? Do you know? I believe this is just a petition for review, um, probably to get the parties together so the judge can get an idea of, of what they're looking at. Um, it's a judge, not a, not a uh, uh, what do they call those Court people? magistrate. Ma court magistrate, right. I don't know. Um, it's not listed. Okay. It doesn't list who it, who it is. Who, who's going to be hearing it? Um, but I'll let you. I'll let you know when I go. Um, we did get a, two other complaints from neighbors of the farm, saying that he's now uncovered his manure. Um, but I've also heard from Jack Burns, the animal inspector. The farm now no longer has horses on site. The only regulation we have is for horses and manure management. So we don't have much jurisdiction over manure management of farm animals unless it's a nuisance, which is what we did, had declared the other pile. Um, but because he's appealed it, it's at a standstill at the moment. Um, so there's no action that we can take unless it gets out of control, which I'll be going out next week to check it out. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. If things changed out there and, and the, the nuisance has increased, mm -hmm. then, I, then I can write a new order letter on your behalf that, and the town can take further action on it. Can you give me a call? Uh, I'd like to go with you. Sure. Thank you. He certainly consumed quite a bit of our resources over the last six months. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it strikes me as odd that he has animals, he has no money. Mm -hmm. Just a comment I'd like maybe brought up by <coughs> town council. How is he feeding these animals? Uh, is there a future problem that we should be looking at with him? Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think it's out of our purview mm -hmm. for to go there and make sure that a new nuisance isn't being created because he doesn't have any farm equipment. He doesn't have any farm equipment. Doesn't have any money. It has animals that are not being fed. That's what I'm worried about. Along yeah, we don't know the, that. Along with the other things, we don't know that. But if you have no money, how are you keeping animals fed? Well, and there's an open tax issue on this property as well. It's mm -hmm. sizable. I believe it's over $100,000 of back taxes. It just strikes me as odd. And who, if there's animal, animal cruelty, who would be the committee or who would be the t in the town? Which uh, group falls? Monitors well, that? It, the it's the animal control oh. officer oh. Who, who's appointed under our, our purview as well as the police department. Um, are, are they animal, aware of this? They are. They they go out on a monthly basis and they haven't 
witnessed anything that is alarming that needs their attention. That's good. Okay. That's yeah. all. I just yeah. thought about that the other day. Mm -hmm. um, it is 7 o'clock. I'd like to move on to new business. Okay. Um, hearing for Gilbertson, 16 Schoolhouse Road. To consider a variance request to install a new Title V septic system prepared by Down Cape Engineering Incorporated. Variances from 310 CMR 15.211 minimum setbacks to allow a proposed soil absorption system to be five feet from the property line where 10 feet is required. Variance of five feet. To allow a proposed soil absorption system to be eight feet from the foundation where 20 feet is required. For variance request of 12 feet. To allow a proposed soil absorption system to be five feet from the slab foundation where 10 feet is required, variance request of five feet, and to allow a 25% reduction in required surface, subsurface soil disposal area design requirements. I will now open the hearing. Good evening. My name is Danny Gonzalez from Down Cape Engineering. I'm here on behalf of our project at 16 uh, Schoolhouse Road, right up the street here. Um, we, this is an existing 10-bedroom dwelling. Um, it was recently purchased by a new owner, and they're looking to upgrade the septic, do some renovations, remodels of the house, kind of update things. Uh, it's served by a single cesspool. <coughs> excuse me, single cesspool now. Um, it's a tight lot, so we're asking for these variances. We tried to keep it as close to half of the required setback distances as we could, uh, just to allow an ease of installation and um, kind of keep the cost down. We feel like it's a great improvement over what is existing, and you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions should you have any. Any comments from the audience? Okay, I will now close the meeting and discuss with the board. Any questions? Seems like a lot of bedrooms. Uh, are I they, know. Uh, what, you know, are they square footage wise meeting the regulations? Uh, it looks the idea, looks like a 10 bedroom house. I don't know what they plan to do with it. It's an existing assessed for 10 bedrooms so that's usually kind of what we base our design on you know water recharge district no no it's right behind um the chamber of commerce so that's yep. not a water recharge. from from the look of the floor plan they're all large bedrooms at least 10 by 10. Yep. um and there's two kitchens so i'm assuming it's a duplex at the current time um, I'm not sure what it was used for in the past. We are proposing a multi-compartment tank or dual compartment tank, so now if it ever was a duplex or considered a duplex, it would meet that requirement as far as tank size goes. Mm -hmm. So it would be, with this work, it would be possible to be a duplex? Yes. Um, any other questions? No. So they're proposing to upgrade a cesspool system. It's a great improvement over what's currently there. The lot size is very small. The building size is very big. There's a garage on it as well. Um, they're asking for spatial setbacks rather than environmental variances. Um, I recommend approval of the variances with deed restriction of no increase of bedrooms or square footage. Um, variances to be recorded to the registry of deeds, no garbage disposal allowed. I'd like to uh, have the board make a um, motion to accept the health director's comments on this project. I'll move it. Second. I'll second it. Are we supposed to say the language, though? Like, 
no increased bedrooms, no oh, okay, yeah. garbage disposal. As per the health director's. Yeah, as per the health director's report, there's like, I think you said four, four. things. Mm -hmm. was the garbage disposal, the no increase of bedrooms. What were the other two? No um, variances for what? Um, increase in space. No increase in square footage or habitable space, restricted to 10 bedrooms, no garbage disposal, and record the conditions at the registry of deeds. Okay. All in favor? Aye. We accept the motion. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay, the next hearing is for Howard, 92 Belmont Road, to consider a variance request to install a new Title V septic system prepared by Moran Engineering Associates, LLC. Variance is from 310 CMR 15.211 minimum setbacks to allow a proposed soil absorption system to be five feet from the property line where 10 feet is required. Variance of five feet to allow a proposed soil absorption system to be five feet from the public way easement where 10 feet is required. Variance of five feet to allow a proposed soil absorption system to be 10.5 feet from the cellar wall where 20 feet is required, variance of 9.5 feet, and to allow a proposed soil absorption system to be 90 feet from the edge of the wetland where 100 feet is required, variance of 10 feet. Okay, I will now open the hearing. Can I just say my little statement? Sure. That I talked with you about, emailed. Um, I the owner here is a former work colleague of mine, but I have no financial interest in this property at all, so I just want to make that be transparent about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, you Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, Rick Judd, Moran Engineering, representing um, Roseanne Howard. Um, this is a real estate transfer. Uh, the existing three-bedroom dwelling sits on a 9,900 square foot lot, relatively small lot. Uh, it's currently being serviced by a single cesspool. Uh, the proposal before you does not have any increase in flow. There's no change in the use of the house. What we're proposing is uh, to utilize a monolithic 1,500 gallon septic tank as your first component, um, an effluent filter with an alarm that would activate at 50% capacity so the homeowner knows to have it serviced. Uh, from there, it would travel to a 1,000-gallon monolithic uh, pump chamber. And then from there, we would uh, use a leaching field that's a shallow profile with pressure distribution uh, so that we were following the guidelines of the local approving authority. Anytime we're less than 100 feet, uh, we basically can't pump and use a, a distribution box. We go to a pressure distribution system. Uh, the proposal before you... Um, couple of considerations I guess that I would look at one of the variances is technically not a variance under title five um, relative to the distance between the public way easement and the soil absorption system just for the record uh, we're just doing that in good faith so that we have it on the record if there was ever a town taking that uh, it's there and it's in place and uh, it's protected um, there is uh, some contouring from the road it'll look relatively flat this will not be sticking up out of the ground um, and I think uh, with the constraints of the uh, resource being the wetland to our north and to our northwest, uh, under maximum feasible compliance, this is the best system that we can uh, fit in here at this time. Any comments from um, the audience? Well, that, I'm a neighbor. Could you state your name, please? Yeah, and you'll need, to, you'll need to come up to the microphone as well. Thanks, Rick. Uh, my name's Deborah Redman. I'm at 89 Belmont Road, directly across the street. So just for clarification, um, given the fact that there are two homes um, further up the street that actually have tanks, cement, walls um, around their septic system, I um, just wanted to get clarity around the location of this system and about um, how raised it will be you know from the ground um, this is a tight road 
So having it actually be that five feet from the road, um, it, it could be pretty obtrusive looking. Are you talking about for like traffic flow? Yeah. Okay. And, and also walking. There are no sidewalks. And uh, really, people frequently travel up and down the road to the beach, um, you know, with small children, with, you, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. So just having it be close to the road, you know, is a little bit of a safety issue. Rick, would you like to address her concerns? Uh, I, I see zero safety issues here whatsoever. Uh, first off, you'd be walking on private property. You'd be walking across somebody's lawn. Then you'd have to scale the wall and the hedges, uh, the direct butter to the south. So I don't see there's an issue. Um, it's going to be relatively flat. So Belmont Road will still be at 13.2. It's still higher than the proposed finish grade of the soil absorption system. And again, uh, the roadway or the extent of the roadway uh, is certainly greater than 10 feet, um, so I don't see any safety issue whatsoever. The pressure dose system is not uh, got to, this won't have a cement barrier around like the systems that you are talking about. Yeah. This is a different system right. altogether. Okay. Right. That so uses, uh, go ahead, you yeah. know more about it than me. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, I'm sorry. No, uh, yeah, I just. So um, the premise of pressure distribute, um, working it out, some people have containment walls, so the two properties directly to the north have containment walls because they are at a little bit lower elevation. Um, in this particular case, we use a, uh, a membrane, a liner, uh, very rigid. Um, the soil absorption system is contained uh, within that liner, and it's higher than the soil absorption system. Uh, from there, the earth is just contoured. Uh, there's really um, no, um, this, I, I, this is my opinion. Uh, driving up Belmont Road, I don't know that you would notice this. Uh, aesthetically, it, it, there's not going to be an elevation change really looking across the road. The, the yard will change a little bit, yeah. but uh, it won't be up. And then the pressure distribution is a veneer versus a ponding. So distribution pipes, one and a half inches charge you get a spray for a, a, a dose is what we call it, and it, it cascades across all the units, so it's more like a veneer of liquid versus um, if we were to use, I don't know, 20 gallons of water, it doesn't all end up in one spot, it's dispersed uh, throughout. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question, but. Yeah, um, I think you did. Okay. The grass, actually, it helps. Yeah, we have that'd be great. It'll look certain, good. Yeah. Uh, we have conservation mix, too. Much okay. more. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Aesthetically pleasing. Thank okay. you. Good questions. And any, any other comments from the audience? Okay, I will now close the hearing. And um, say bedroom spray. No, no there, the there's no increase in flow. It's existing three. It, it will remain three. And as uh, uh, we're aware, we'll uh, be filing at the Registry of Deeds uh, the prescribed um, recommendations through the director. Yeah, and they got a monitoring system before it. Uh, we'll be doing uh, kind of interesting. Uh, we're we're uh, because it is a pressure dosing system. Uh, we'll be on board uh, with that. It's something um, under the 310 CMRs. Pressure distribution systems. Uh, are, the monitoring program is basically for pumps and alarms. That's my interpretation under. DEP, uh, there's a little bit more that we can do nowadays, so uh, we'll be on board with this uh, in perpetuity till we're, uh, till they want to change the guard, so to speak. Good. Thanks. Any other um, comments? No. Do you want to recap? Sure. Um, we're proposing Please. to upgrade the existing cesspool system. We are abutting a, a wetland here. Uh, the system they're proposing is as far away from that wetland as they can can get with maximum feasible compliance. They are proposing monolithic septic tanks because they are within that 100 foot setback to the wetland. Uh, due to the high groundwater, the system is mounted. However, because of the topography of this lot and the road, a wall is not required. The dwelling currently has three bedrooms and there's no plans for additions or alterations at this time. 
Um, we have dimensional as well as environmental variances, that 10 foot variance a request for the wetland. Getting any closer would mean pushing this mound out closer to the road. Um, so I, I believe this plan provides maximum feasible compliance and it's a great improvement over the existing conditions. I recommend approval of the variances with conditions of maximum three bedrooms on the lot, no increase in square footage or habitable space recorded at the registry of deeds and no garbage grinder allowed. Ma'am, just for the record, this has, um, I should have clarified, uh, had conservation approval as well. Already did. Okay. Yes. I'll make a motion that we accept. Oh, okay. I'll make a motion to accept the recommendations of the health inspector. Second. Any, um, everybody in agreement? No vote? Passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next thing we have on our agenda is the review and approval of annual permits. We have quite a few permits. It's that time of year. We have food establishment, septic installer, stables, refuse hauler, septic hauler, and motel permits. We have one new permit. It is for an event permit for Rain's Real Baking. They actually were at the Cranberry Festival without a permit, and we tracked them down and have required a permit, and so that's what that is. Uh, we did a, give them um, the paperwork, and they did provide paperwork and fee. What's so this what is the Rain's Bakery Rain's group? Real Baking. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember what town they're out of. I think it's Falmouth. Um, but they were at the Cranberry Festival. No permits, so we had to, to be mean to them. Um, and everybody else is a renewal. So we need a motion on this. I need a motion to accept the uh, applications for permits. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. anything else for you um, anything else you'd like to discuss we've got um, our hearings done our old business new business yeah. it's a short one yeah. I like that yeah yeah, yeah. all right see dr. Inslee missed it oh, <laughs> see? Time. That's what he, gets. he thinks he's on vacation Penn station <laughs> Um, motion I'll, to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor, I'm sure. Aye. 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 I'll see you next month. And um, Pam is Pam is presenting on your behalf for the selectmen's meeting on the fifth. Thank you.